So, two years ago, I made my weight fall off. And since then, it's never really rebounded. Everyone will tell you that the key to weight loss is calories out versus calories in. But I'm here to share with you that it's much more than just counting calories and checking your scales because those are the things I didn't do and it got me the long-term result. So hi, I'm Patty, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get started. Part one, killing off my old identity. Now during the time this photo was taken, I was in the last month of my long-term four years relationship. While I was in that relationship, I was identifying myself in a certain way where this version of me valued comfort over taking risk. Although I knew that I was a disciplined person who was ready to work hard, but I valued what was given in front of me and how comfortable it was instead of sacrificing my old self in order to build a whole new identity. The old version of me who just couldn't say no to very simple things that I thought wouldn't contribute to my weight gain had the attitude of tirelessly comparing herself to other social media influencers and believing that everything that she saw on the screen was real. Even though there are so many apps to morph your waist and make yourself look better than you actually are. That version of me does not have strong self-control because every single time she's taken to a beautiful experience, the act of leaving the food behind and wasting money felt like a bad thing to do. So therefore, in order to have everything worth the pay, I should finish the food and actually stuff myself until I felt very, very uncomfortable. And the biggest factor of all was that the old version of me was goal-oriented instead of being character oriented. Meaning that when I wake up one day and I realize that actually I want to lose 10 kilograms, I was more focused on getting the external result than focusing on shifting the way I saw myself, my belief patterns, and the day-to-day -day actions that I take, which has to be congruent to the way I saw myself. These three detrimental behaviors were enough to keep me stuck in this cycle of comfort eating to the point of bloating every single time and normalizing that feeling of anxiety after I ate. Repeat the same workout routine that didn't bring me results because again, I was goal oriented instead of being flexible by being character oriented. Work out very, very hard and then comfort eat when I felt very tired to the point where I would burn out and give up altogether. As you can see, this whole cycle required a behavioral change and the behaviors are always influenced by your belief systems. So in order for me to permanently break this cycle, I had to eliminate every single source of external environment that was influencing me to stay in my comfort zone. So the two biggest changes that were made externally was that the relationship had ended mutually, but I also deactivated my old Instagram account for four months, allowing me the space to really come back and reflect who am I really and who do I wish to embody on a long-term basis? The minute that my time was spent differently, that's when my weight also changed drastically. Because I had no comfort zone or cushy place to really fall back on anymore, that's when I started taking myself to an actual ocean water pool, the actual environment that allowed me to be able to swim. I went from being not able to swim in the rock pool to doing 2,000 meters within 10 months. And that process alone got me the shredded body. But I wasn't trying to do it to really lose weight. I was doing it because I really enjoyed improving my swimming. So in those time periods, I would have the attitude of jump into the water first before you can really swim. We'll figure a way out to get to the end. But in the meantime, we have to start before we are ready. And even though I've always feared of drowning, but I knew that there were lifeguards around that I was safe. And if I didn't jump in now, then when will I be able to conquer the ocean water and do 2000 meters the way I wanted to do it? And the interesting thing is because I felt so proud of myself with my progress, the more I worked out, the more it was fun. And that then created a ripple effect in every single area of my life, such as eating, portion control and mindfulness. And I was surrounded by people that really valued their health and I was seeing a lot of six packs and beautiful bikini body. That's when I also felt like I wanted to have that bikini body and I knew that I can have it. So what I would also do in between my swims is I would walk a lot 
From point A to point B, I was always power walking. Every single time I wanted to buy something or do a coastal walk, I wouldn't mind walking that extra 20 minutes and walk at a certain pace where I didn't even realize I was working out. But just the process of enjoying the present moment while being physical, while moving my body each and every day without thinking about, oh, I'm doing this to lose weight, but rather than I'm doing this because I enjoy the moment. Those compounded moments of taking small actions every single day then led to a bigger transformation that became the byproduct of a very strong and healthy life routine that I was building for myself. So altogether, after years and years of staying the same, plateauing at a certain weight and never being able to break out the cycle, the minute that I got rid of my social media and I was single again, I was able to shed to this picture within four months. But as you guys know, weight loss is a long-term routine. So even though you already achieved a certain result, but that was actually the easy part. The hardest part of all was that I actually lost access to that lifestyle and now it was 10 times harder for me to shed like that when my environment is not supporting me to really have that kind of dream body. Which leads to part two, and that is not getting defeated by your life obstacles. Eventually, I was in a position where I didn't have access to gym memberships. I didn't have access to the ocean water or really a motivating environment where I can just spend 20 minutes walking around and enjoying the atmosphere. There was nothing motivating me to have that shredded body anymore. So what I decided to do was make this contractual agreement with myself. And that contract was, no matter what happens from this point onwards, I will never give up on the version of myself that I once already became, regardless of where I live and what my outer conditions look like. No matter how many times I fail, I will do my very best to get back up again and win against that obstacle. Even though I saw manifestation work for so many people, that it sounds too good to be true but I'm deciding that manifestation is going to work for me and I'm going to manifest my dream body instead of counting calories checking the scale or being too rigid with my routine this contractual agreement that I made with myself then allowed me to behave in a way where every single action is still congruent to the best version of me despite the fact that I don't have any more external motivating sources for me to stay shredded so the first internal transformation was creating the best relationship relationship with food. Now I believe up to this day that the relationship that you have with what you eat is very similar to your romantic relationships or friendships. If you don't nurture that relationship properly, it will destroy you. So I'm deciding that instead of me always seeing food as my enemy, I'm going to see food as this beautiful thing where we both enjoy the moment together and we have just enough to fill our energy each and every day. So the main thing I did for myself was give myself permission to eat whatever I like, but at the portion that works for me and after I've done something really, really good for myself. So in other words, I was practicing this muscle of delaying my own gratification. I usually really crave food around 10 p.m. And during that time when I really, really want to eat KFC, pizza or ice cream, I would tell myself things like, you know what, next Tuesday, we're gonna go and buy you KFC. But after you successfully do this beach clip or after you swim 20 laps, I promise you we're gonna get that zinger box that you want. Or I promise you, you will eat that two to three pizza slices. But after you do this one thing that really makes you respect yourself. So this is kind of like raising this inner child within you where of course I'll give you the exact things that you want without letting it destroy you. So I started associating the feeling of self-respect with rewarding myself with the food that I like. After I eat the food that I like, I even find that I feel so satisfied that I don't feel the need to eat anything else. And the thing is, once I allow myself to give exactly what my brain craves for. Now my brain is learning that actually, Patty is a very generous person. And because she's generous and abundant, she doesn't have to eat more than the things that she wants. So one KFC Zinger box is enough. That is the only thing that I will eat. I will not top up with any more pizzas or other snacks. Whereas when I used to deprive myself, what I would do is that I would try to eat healthy, but I would start topping up with little bits of nuts, a little bit of egg, a little bit of rice, and I would just keep topping up and topping up to the point where there is no portion control. And that leads to the second part, and that is mastering the game of portion control. 
See, I used to watch a lot of Thai celebrities on how they lose weight. And there was a period where everybody was emphasizing this thing called intermittent fasting. And I never even realized that I was doing intermittent fasting myself. When I was living in Bondi, I would try to get to the iceberg pool by 6.30 to 7 a.m. And even if I wasn't living there, I would try to get to iceberg as soon as it opened. So between 6.30 to about 8.30 a.m., I would still be swimming. Then 8.30 to 9.30, I would be getting changed and walking around to find what I wanted to eat. So my first First solid breakfast will always be at about 10 30 a.m or sometimes even 11 a.m and then when i no longer had that lifestyle i was still eating my first meal at about 10 30 to 11 a.m and the last meal from my previous day would be about 7 p.m or 7 30 p.m and the thing that i usually do is that i would hype myself up at night time saying that if you really really want to eat this I will make it for you for breakfast. But that's if you film a successful video or you do this one thing for yourself that you really, really feel good about. And so I would make my breakfast my special meal. Now, of course, if you are tied down to other life obligations, it might not be practical for you to have a solid breakfast at about 10 a.m. But I found what worked for me. And what really worked for me was eating exactly what I wanted on my first meal, but also drink water or long black before I have that first meal. In that way, I would feel satisfied right away feeling like you know what I've already got the first thing I really wanted to eat out of the way I don't really crave anything anymore because I gave myself exactly what I wanted on my first meal but I also made an arrangement for myself that as long as you do this activity as long as you film your video as long as you work out today as long as you do your beach clip then I will give yourself permission to do this right away and this loop of creating an arrangement for myself really really worked for me because the more I was eating exactly what I wanted from the night before, the less cravings I even have to check out new restaurants, to cafe hop, to go to bars, because I felt like my life was so satisfying based on how I was treating myself already. Which also leads to the next part, and that is making eating food a sacred ritual. So during the phase where I was still adapting to this new lifestyle, I would do my very best to make my experience with eating food a very beautiful one. So even though I couldn't really afford to eat out, I couldn't afford a fine dining for myself. I couldn't afford to take myself to places where the plates always looked beautiful. So I said to myself, you know what? Screw the restaurants. I'll make my plate beautiful. I will plate your breakfast in a way that makes you feel like you just spent $25 on it. And miraculously, it made me very satisfied to the point where I don't see the value of really buying brunch going cafe hopping or trying new restaurants all the time. So what I would do back then is make poke bowls for myself. Because I really like meat, I also want to feel like I'm still eating healthy. And I would make sure I decorate my poke bowl in a colorful and presentable way so that it feels like, you know what, this bowl is so satisfying to eat, but it doesn't make me feel sick. And let's just say the food is not healthy at all. What I would do is make small portions of those and put it in a small bowl so that every single time I eat in a small bowl, I'm communicating to myself that this is my limit. And even though you may think that eating in a small bowl is not satisfying, but because I was getting used to it day in and day out, eating in a small bowl and making the bowl look colorful or beautiful or something like I really, really want to buy worked so well for me. And what I would even do is eat slowly. Yes, I know I'm very privileged to be able to eat slowly and not rush back to work, but I always made sure to savor every single flavor, whether it's a soy sauce with rice, whether it's sugar, whether it's a basic pancake, I would really, really feel that flavor and feel so grateful that, oh my God, I have access to delicious food again. So even if I'm eating a simple scrambled egg and rice and it's healthy food, I still try to make the flavors interesting and really catering towards what I enjoy. And the more I enjoy it, the more I feel like, you know what, this is enough. Let's go and work out. Let's go and film a video. Let's go and edit. Let's go and do the actual thing that makes you respect yourself so I can reward you with more of these experiences and really create this beautiful, beautiful loop for my life. And the last part is I didn't nail clean eating at all. Honestly, guys, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a model and I don't have to be really, really, really thin. But in order for me to have this shredded body, I can still eat whatever I wanted. And no, I don't always eat vegetables because I don't enjoy it that much. That being said, I really make sure I master portion control and only eat what is enough for me. See, what's very interesting is that I started to learn that as long as I take myself out to do at least two to three kilometers of walking, as long as I get myself onto the yoga mat, as long as I stretch a bit, then there is no threat to eating cakes. The only reason why sugar or cake would be threatening to me is because I don't have my whole life conquered. I haven't conquered my mind. 
I haven't conquered my contractual agreement with myself that if you eat this, you must push up. If you do this, you must go and swim. If you don't conquer this part, of course you have to deprive yourself from cake. But because I was able to nail my discipline overall, I was then also able to stop eating cake when I had to stop. So I was able to always enjoy the flavors of my own cake in the portion that works for me. Because I also feel proud of myself that I don't have to spend money on eating out. And I even find restaurant portions to be big. So every single time we're buying something overpriced in a small portion, that is the perfect amount for me. So as you can see, I did have some calorie deficit, but I wasn't intentionally doing it because I needed to lose weight. I was doing it because I wanted to respect myself. I wanted to make sure that whatever I was doing, it was creating a positive boomerang in every single area of my life, such as filming videos, editing videos, being more productive, reading more things, consuming information. So I tried to make sure that food was like a beautiful flavor to my life. Like it was an added rainbow to my life where, okay, I'm willing to do all these hard work and I'm going to reward myself with all this beautiful experience day in and day out without having to spend money on unhealthy food outside the house. So that honestly worked really, really well for me. The next part is working out. Now the thing that I find so bitter every time I look at influencers telling us that if you want to lose weight, go to the gym. But my question is what if everyone can't afford to have a gym membership? What if you're in a life situation where the right gym, the right environment, the right weight, the right training, the right equipment are just not accessible to you and you always have to travel one hour in order to be in that gym, then how are you going to stay shredded? Again, it comes down to creating a contractual agreement with yourself that if you want to like yourself, you're gonna do this, right? You're not going to wait for the day you have access to gym. You're not gonna wait for the day where you have access to ocean water. And even if it takes you two hours to be at that ocean water, you're going to travel there when you can. That's the kind of attitude that will keep you shredded no matter what kind of life obstacles get in your way. So the first key that really worked for me up to this day is to number one, choose a workout rhythm that works from you when you are at home. Now I can agree with everyone that working out at home sucks. It's not like lifting weight at the gym. You don't get that dopamine hit. You don't get that high, high feeling. But if you make that environment work for you, you can really, really stay shredded without going to the gym. So for example, my enjoyable workout routine at home is that I love listening to K-pop songs while I work out. I love listening to new K-pop girl groups and actually immersing myself in that identity where I'm that perfect girl, that perfect, young, beautiful, radiant, fit girl, jumping around doing her workouts and really put myself in a flow state while I'm working out. And the thing is, because I don't have access to ocean water anymore, I also don't do morning workouts. But what I do is set apart 30 to 40 minutes to get onto my yoga mat at around 7 p.m. or at night time, and I really go all in within that 30 to 40 minutes. On some days where I have my periods, I'm just really, really exhausted, I will still try to do something for 15 to 20 minutes, whether it's stretching, light yoga, or just something to keep my momentum going. And the most important part about this is that if you're not goal-oriented, you can always adapt your workout rhythm depending on how your body feels. Obviously, it's not motivating to work out at home. It's not motivating to not be at the gym. So my body would actually feel even more tired from not being at the gym. And I have to find a way to adapt my workout so that I don't feel like, you know what? I'm not at the gym, so I'm just gonna sleep. And also one thing that really, really helps me when I'm working out at home is shutting off all the lights. And I'm tunneling my vision into that version of me that I really, really love. And coupled with K-pop songs, I feel very radiant. I feel like I'm in a different world. And by shutting all my senses and really tunneling myself in that 30 to 40 minutes period, I'm able to really do my jumps, my planks, my push-ups properly to the point where once it's over, I don't have to think about it anymore because I already finished the workout by the time I can feel the pain. Therefore, if whatever you see is lack of motivation, you want to make sure that you carve out this special time of the day, whether it's 7 p.m. or in the evenings when you go and do your walk and get yourself in that zone. The most important part is getting yourself in the zone, putting yourself in the flow state, not thinking about anything and just really focus on being the best version of you. What I would tell myself is that it only takes 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I promise we will stop right away. 
and there were many many times where I stopped right away and that in a way really motivates me to try again the next few days after. Two, making the best with your outdoor environment. So even though I'm not near the ocean water anymore and I barely see people in six pack running around, actually there's nobody running around shirtless around here, but I still try to find the positive part about it. And that is that we are surrounded by many green grasses. And I completely understand that if you are in the city or you don't have access to nature, then you can perhaps try to find something or somewhere good about where you live and really feel the gratitude of being able to work out there. So in my case, I really acknowledge that it's more inspiring when you're in a room full of guys with six pack and girls with really beautiful and shedded body. But if you don't have access to that environment, what you wanna do is really appreciate the sunset that you get to see. If you don't have a grass to walk on, if there are not trees around, you wanna acknowledge one small thing that you can see in front of you. And for me, in my case, it was also the sunset. I really try to enjoy the color of the sky. I really try to be like, oh my God, the sky's turning orange. The sky's turning pink. I'm gonna really, really get myself in the flow state and walk at a certain pace. And the more I was walking, the more I was also sweating. If you feel like your home sucks, everywhere sucks, nothing else works, then at least try to do long walks. Long walks went a very, very long way for me because even when I was living near the ocean water, I was doing tons of walking. In summer, it was so hot and so disgusting to work out indoor. I would wait till the evening and schedule about two hours for myself to walk to a park and come back home. And this would be about seven kilometers. I would always try to appreciate everything that I was walking past by, whether it's the people, people walking their dogs, the sunset, the clear water, the beautiful wind breeze, the smell of the tree. Like I would really, really soak it in during those two hours and really feel like, you know what? I'm living in this alternate universe where everything is so perfect right now. And the more I was thinking that way, the more I was walking past people that would smile at me, which made my walk become more enjoyable. The next workout that I used to do on a weekly basis was also long swims. I love swimming because again, I loved getting into that flow state. The thing with swimming is that it's so hard for you to notice everything around you because you have to focus on your breath. So there were periods in my life where I would leave the home at 3.45 a.m. to get to Bondi Icebergs by 6 a.m. So I would really, really appreciate the sunrise because the sunrise is Bondi is so beautiful, not like the sunrise in a suburban area. Then after that, I would feel so inspired before I jump into the water. And as soon as I jump into the water, I would feel like, you know what, I'm ready. I'm ready for the cardio. And nothing is in my mind besides the fact that I enjoy my time so much here. I enjoy how my skin feels against the ocean water. I enjoy the flow I feel when I'm swimming in the ocean water and everything just feels so perfect for one or two hours. And in those time periods, I'm losing a lot of calories, but because I enjoy the moment so much, I don't even notice if I'm hungry or not. I don't notice how tired I am because I'm so in the moment, in that gratitude elevated feeling state. But then when I wasn't swimming at Bondi in the morning anymore, I was trying to find a way to go to suburbs I really, really enjoy and swim at that place. So the next place I really enjoyed swimming was Andrew Charleston Pool at Sydney CBD and at Manly. And what I used to do back then was feel really grateful that, oh my God, I have access to these places. This place looks awesome. I love the facilities, the people are polite, everything is perfect here. And when I feel that feeling state before I even go to swim, my muscles would somehow have more energy to do the actual swimming. So by the time I jump into the pool, I'm already flooding myself with these positive thoughts like, I'm so grateful to be here, I'm so excited to swim, I'm so excited to go into my perfect zone again. And this excited feeling would then motivate me to wanna to do 20 laps or 30 laps. And there were times where I was doing 30 laps without the sauna before. And even though it was really, really freezing. But what I used to tell myself is that everything is so perfect right now. I don't see any life obstacles. I forgot about all my miseries because I'm in this water right now and I'm just here right now. And it feels pretty darn awesome. And the more I was flowing, the more laps I was finishing off, the more accomplished I felt and the more motivated I feel to do it again. And the other thing I want to add with working out is beach clips. Now this part is very circumstantial and I'm very privileged to have the time and the space to do beach clips. And because I knew that I loved being at the beach at the time so much, I thought, why not feel myself working out in a bikini? I wanna see how my body looks when I'm working out, especially in a bikini. I wanna feel sexy. And that's how it started. 
but just working out for fun and seeing how things go. So on my very first clip, I bought this new bikini set for about $35, both the top and the bottom. And I felt like this swimsuit was really, really cute on me. So I was looking back at my clip and I felt like, oh, I look fit. It looks cute. I'm not really that model thin, but I do enjoy seeing myself doing this. But most of all, I really, really enjoyed the process of doing push-ups on the sand. I enjoyed doing the squats. I enjoyed everything about it. And so I made it a mission at the time to edit 100 beach clips before launching this YouTube channel. And I'm always deluding myself that I'm gonna get paid for this. This beach clip is gonna be my career. I'm going to do this for a living. And even though that delusion was exactly what it is, a delusion, but it helped me shed a lot during that time. I just kept deluding myself with thoughts like, we're gonna get sponsored to do this. I'm gonna keep shedding. I'm gonna keep getting better. I'm gonna make the shots more extraordinary. So as you can see, I wasn't even thinking at all, I'm gonna lose 10 kilograms when I do this. I'm just thinking about my future, my vision, my dream life while doing this. Every single time I did the push-ups or get the extraordinary shots, it was more like you have to do this because I've come so far. You've traveled too far to not do this. Come on, Patty, you can do it. This is your career. We're gonna get paid for this. We're gonna make this our future. And I just kept deluding myself with this thought to the point where I did end up editing 100 beach clips before I launched this channel. And because of that process, I then also felt confident to share my story on camera. So everything was interlinked and weight loss was no longer a goal, but it was just a byproduct of me creating this dream routine, the dream lifestyle, adapting myself to my current environment, trying my best to not blame, to not feel victimized and finding beautiful things about where I am right now and then really get myself into that positive momentum loop where I never end up binge eating, getting depressed, feeling down and then comfort eating because I've been through that phase and it was not worth it. Next part mental exercise. And why is mental exercise so important? Well, that's because majority of this world is pretty negative. Many people are conditioned to believe to be the byproduct of their default environment. But I don't want to buy into that theory. I want to create my dream life. So therefore, I have to create that internal environment that enables me to have the things that I want, regardless if that thing is close to me right now or not. So that main ritual that kept me going every single day is positive inner dialogue. Affirmations and manifestation may seem like a woo-woo thing, but for me, it's got me to a point where within that two years, when I was shredding in the correct environment, and then I lost that environment to stay shredded, I still managed to have this beautiful body. Even though there may be some times where I go up and down a little bit, there may be some times where I get a bit bloated or puffy, but I was always able to take myself back to the exact kind of body that I wanted. And that was because every single day I was telling myself things like, you are beautiful. You look so beautiful on camera today. You are doing so well. I'm so proud of you. Let's get this workout done and feel proud of ourselves. I'm so proud of your cooking. This tastes really good, but I'm also so proud of the way you portion your meals. I'm proud of everything that you do. And for two years, I just kept saying these things to myself day in and day out. After every single beach clips, I kept saying to myself, damn, you look so good. You did it. You are such a badass. Look at that clip. Look at how extraordinary that looks. And I kept saying this to myself before I even got the extraordinary shots. So by the time I go down to Kuji at 4.30 a.m. to get my extraordinary shots, I was already believing for several months that I always get extraordinary shots. And therefore I got the extraordinary shots at 6 a.m. So this all comes down to how you talk to yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't always think about my goals that much. I just think about the process, being in the present moment, doing what I need to do for that day and feeling proud of myself. So in a way, I stopped obsessing altogether with the actual goal that I wanted, but I really focus on how happy I was each day. Do I enjoy the sunset? If I was too tired to enjoy the sunset, do I enjoy my stretches? Do I feel like a queen when I shut off the lights and really focus on my workouts? Do I feel amazing when I eat? When I have that sacred ritual of really appreciating the flavors of my food and being grateful even that I get to wake up each day knowing that there's always food on the plate. What a rich life that is. And finally, removing all sources of negativity from your environment. Do you guys believe it that majority of the times I was gaining weight, it's because my cortisols were activated. And then when my cortisols are activated, I feel stressed and I'm taking all these lower value actions like comfort eating, comparing myself to other people, feeling too goal oriented, being obsessed with hitting my goals. And now everything is wonky and all over the place. 
and those sources of negativity may be people around you that always want to tell you what they're seeing with their eyes and hearing with their ears. For example, if they're not happy with their body, the truth for them is that I'm ugly. I don't like my body. I don't like my bank account. I don't like anything I'm seeing. And while this is the actual factual truth today, but your imagination becomes your reality. And if you associate yourself with people that don't appreciate food, that sees food as I'm gonna eat as much as I want until I'm full. They say to you shit like, food is just food. You put it into your mouth and you swallow it. Like what the hell is that? I was constantly told things like, why do you have to make food fancy? Fine dining is overpriced. Food is there for you to eat and swallow it. Buffets are the best. You should eat for the value of the buffet. And I freaking hated living that way because food can be a beautiful thing, right? And then these same people that never appreciate the beauty of the bowl they eat. They just kind of stuff food down their stomach. They are the ones that check the scale. So the scale is never an actual reflection of our progress and nor is counting calories. Like instead of counting calories, can you not gauge how your stomach feels? Can you not mindfully eat and know, okay, I'm starting to feel this way, that's enough. Why are you making your life so complicated like a suffering when you can make your whole process simple beautiful and easy to do. If you like counting your calories, go for it, but stop doing it obsessively. Don't check your scales obsessively and focus on the mundane, minuscule things and make that a beautiful ritual for yourself. Enjoy how the ocean water feels on your skin. Enjoy how the sunrise makes you feel gratitude and therefore want to work out. Enjoy where you live, enjoy where you are, and I promise you, the weight loss or the body and the shedding will be the exact byproduct of your internal state. So again, I hope you guys enjoy this video and see you soon. Bye-bye.